Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? Doing all right. Kyle, we have a special surprise for everybody. Uh, not only are we doing is a... It, po- is, it you, is it you in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen? No. Well, there's that too. Thanks for pointing that out now, <laughs> as opposed to before we started recording. There we go. You're welcome. Yeah. No, that was totally awesome. Uh, yada, 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 whatever. Uh, new tradition, good tradition. And that's, that's, that's the small talk at the top. We've, we've exhausted small talk. Kyle, it's time to move on to the rest of the show. All right. What do we got today? We're doing a mock class. Um, as I should hit enter on, on that, uh, we got a mock class for today. Uh, we are renewing our mock class for 2025 and that's going to be fun. We've had some changes. We've had a couple of decommitments. We've had some guys who we definitely thought were going to be in the class when we did the uh, previous mock, uh, now they aren't so obvious and, but we also, so we have some bad news. we got some good news. We're going to update the mock. Um, and if you're watching this, I'm going to let you guys know right off top. We're doing two episodes this week because I am crazy. And I felt like I was ready to do a 2026 mock class. Is that stupid? <laughs> Is that stupid? Yes, it is. It's a very stupid thing to be doing uh, this far away from just just that early in the class. It's very stupid. But you know what? It'll be fun. Uh, you might you guys might learn some new names, some new names to keep an eye on, keep an ear out for. So uh, it's a stupid exercise, but it's going to be a fun exercise. And that's all that really matters. But today. We're doing the. uh latest edition of the 2025 mock you ready to get started yeah let's roll all right here surprise at the quarterback position right jerry yeah. let's let's just yeah. start off with the quarterback we've got it we, the big surprise here right yeah Tavian st Clair. uh of course kyle uh being sarcastic having a little bit of fun um the least surprising one of the least surprising items on this list um uh, he's uh, from bell fountain ohio solid as solid can be no worries for flips here um in fact uh for those of you watching the podcast you will notice that there are two spots for quarterbacks um or for all of the positions, I'm going to be giving you both a the actual proper mock, but then I'm going to give you some additional names to keep uh, an eye out for, an ear on. Um, but a, at the quarterback position, I don't even have there. There's no this the box below the quarterback position where I'd put some other guys to keep an eye out for. Empty. We we we're sent clear all the way here. Running back? It? Running back. Running back? Running back. Um, you know, I, I felt I felt good about Bo Jackson ending up at Ohio State for a while now. I do feel like I keep switching out the the guy below or the guy pairing with Bo Jackson. Um I've had all sorts of guys there. Um if I, I last time I had Marquise Davis there, another Ohio running back. Um, I've had Byron Lewis there, a running back from the state of Florida. Um, Had a lot of guys in this spot. And if I'm being honest, the guy who I've moved into the slot now, I've been sort of holding off doing it. Uh, His name is Jordan Davis. One of the reasons why I've been holding off doing it is because he's a Mater Day kid. Um, Martyr Day. I think a martyr day kid. Um, and it feels like every year we put a martyr day kid in the mock and then he never ends up coming to Ohio state. Yeah. 
I yep. Ohio oh, State's yet. Been. Ohio State is yet to land a a, a, a martyr day kid. Uh, something that could be changing here. One, Ohio State got a new running backs coach who already had a great relationship with Jordan Davis as he was recruiting him to go to Oregon at the time. So Ohio State has a a bit of a pre-existing advantage there. Additionally, Ohio State now has a, a bit of a mole, I suppose, in the Martyr Day locker room. Uh, we'll talk about him in the uh, in tomorrow's episode in the 2026 mock class. Um, Chris Henry Jr. Uh, this summer moved from Cincinnati. Um, there's there's stuff going on that we don't really need to get into. Yada yada yada. He's now in California, mm-hmm. playing for Martyr Day. So. Got, got got no high state mole in that locker room could 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 help Ohio State out there. Um, if we look at the other running backs in contention, we have a couple new names um, and a couple familiar names: Marquise Davis, Byron Lewis, of are guys that have showed up in this mock before, uh, who have already talked about. Isaiah West is a guy who's been getting a lot of RPMs, and if you don't know what an RPM is, just pretend I said crystal ball. Guy's been getting a lot of RPMs lately. Um, I almost feel silly not putting him in the list. Uh, Because there's a lot of buzz around Isaiah West coming to Ohio State. I'm uh, just, I'm not ready to put him in over Bo Jackson or Jordan Davis yet. I just, and I don't want to put three running backs. So I think Ohio State has several good options at running back right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think that's probably the key takeaway. Uh, Isaiah West is from the Philadelphia area. Um, you always, you also have Miles Knight from Tennessee, another guy to keep an eye on. Um, I, I will say that of the six running backs I named, uh, he's probably the least likely, but still possible enough that I wanted to include him on the board. Yeah, lot, lot, lot of, lot of running backs. It's hard. It's hard to pick two for from this list here but i i definitely agree with bo jackson is i think is a sheer lock that come into ohio state almost a sheer lock um yeah i'm still be amazing if jordan davis can, can come in along but we'll see we'll see if we can break that curse so to speak over at um out there in california so we'll we shall see we shall see all right who is Brian Hartline bringing in for this group? There's been a lot of shuffling around with the wide receiver group, like the running back group. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of names that are worth noting. Uh, I mean, well, I have more I have more names to rattle off here at the wide receiving group than I do for any other group, either today or tomorrow's show. Um, Desi Jones committed in the class. I feel good about Desi Jones. Vernell Brown, kid from Florida. I feel very good about Vernell Brown. To me, like those are the two lock guys. Kid from Jersey, kid from Florida. Those are like my two lock guys. It gets a little harder to predict after that. I'm going with Mm -hmm. Philip Bell and Quincy Porter. Those are the two guys I'm going with. Uh, Philip Bell is from California. Quincy Porter from New Jersey. But man, there's a lot of guys at the wide receiver position that Ohio State is involved with, if maybe not leading. But definitely like a, a possibility remains at the wide receiver position. It's it's honestly just like a lot of guys. Um you have Winston Watkins Jr. from Florida, Taz Williams Jr. from Texas, um, Javon Boggs, who I think is a guy who I've had in the actual mock class at one point or another. Quentin Simmons Jr., a kid from Ohio, who I think I've had in the class at one point or another. Jamie French, I definitely had just in the last mock. Uh, he, he was a guy who really felt like a for sure 
guy who's coming to Ohio State. And I'm while I'm not counting Ohio State out yet by any means, it, does, it, it sure does look like Texas is in the lead right now. But I'm not I'm not ruling Ohio State out there yet. But I just he felt less likely. He didn't feel like one of the most likely four. And that's ultimately what I'm trying to do here is, is pick the most likely four. Um, Taylor Taylor from uh, Illinois, uh, Dalen McCutcheon from Texas and the Korean Moore, who recently decommitted from LSU, but also looks to be going to going to Texas, going to UT. Um, Texas, if Texas can get both Moore and French. That's a huge wide receiver class for Texas. That's an enormous wide receiver class for Texas if they can get both of those guys. Um, And and that's something to really keep an eye out for. I know we've been talking about it for quite a few years with the different head coaches that's coming over to Texas. Like, I mean, if if, honestly, if Texas can get their shit together, yeah, like keep keep sleeping giants in that. Yeah, keep their players inside the state of Texas. Like, if only if. Well, and especially since, like, we're we're moving into the era of the big two. Yeah. So all of a sudden, unless you're Texas, or you are Texas A and M, you're now just playing at a lower lower level. I'm sorry, TCU. I'm sorry, Texas Tech. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry to SMU. SMU can go to hell. Um, But a lot of other really Houston. I'm sorry, Houston. You just aren't in the same league anymore. Y'all just aren't playing in the same league anymore. You're either in the Big Ten or you're in the SEC or you're not. And that's going to be huge for Texas because you take all of those in-state Texas schools and you basically just say these two more important than the rest. Yep. That's a side. That was a little side quest talking about talking about Texas. Kyle, you're ready, to, you're ready to move on to the tight ends? Sure. Well, the one right now, Nate Roberts. In the class. In the class right now. Uh, I don't, I personally don't think Ohio State's going to go after another, but I mean, if they would, I, I think they would probably stay in state here. Uh, Luca Gilbert is one to keep an eye out for. And uh, some others to keep an eye out. Brock Schott over at Indiana and uh, Landon Pace as well over at, um, uh, I forget where Landon Pace is at. Do you remember? Missouri. Missouri. He's in St. Louis where his dad played professional football for the Rams. That's right. Uh, Yes, he is. He is uh, of that Pace lineage. Um. Luca Gilbert and Brock Schott both looked like guys who for sure, or at least real for sure, almost for sure, were coming to Ohio State at one point. And then stuff happens. Money happens. Um, now it looks like neither of them are coming. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm not giving up on them yet. Committed, not committed. Uh, I, I I don't care. I don't care. Keep an eye on Luca Gilbert. Keep an eye on Brock Shot. Yeah. I think Ohio State does want to take two tight ends, but I also don't think that they're going to reach to do it. Uh, we're, I think, with the transfer portal, I think we're in an era of college football now where if you want two tight ends... You don't just go get another guy and hopefully he pans out. I, I think that's what thing I think that's what teams were doing just two or three years ago. And now I think it's better to just not. 
and leave that scholarship available for a potential porter portal guy. Not, not porter guy, court tool guy. All right. Probably the, in my opinion, probably the biggest position here, Ohio State really needs to focus on. Sure. The slobs, the offensive line here. Got Carter, Carter Lowe already as yep. a commit for Ohio State here. What are some other names out there that you think could potentially land in Ohio State's uh, door, uh, doorstep here? I've been trying to avoid putting this person in the mock class for a very long time. Because I just have not been wanting to get my hopes up. Um, but today I'm going to do it. Today I'm going to do it. I'm moving uh, David Saunders from the state of North Carolina into the class. He is um, in the thumbnail. He is, um, along with Carter Lowe, an absolutely enormous, literally and figuratively pick up if Ohio State can do it. He would be the first big name offensive out of state tackle that Ohio State has picked up in how long? Very you want me to look it up. <laughs> uh, I I I already know who it is. Um, although I am blanking on his name. Um, yeah, it's um, it's been it's been a while. Is the point? It's absolutely been a while. Ohio State has not gotten a top flight offensive tackle from out of state in a very long time. I'm really hoping David, David Sanders is the guy who breaks that streak. Uh, it was petite free, by the way. That's kind of who I was thinking it was, but I wasn't sure if I it just, was anybody. That's, that's who it was. I just, that. for whatever reason, my ADHD ass brain wasn't going to give me the name until I stopped thinking about it. That's, that's all that was. <laughs> um, my name recall sucks, but yeah, um, it's, if I say I can pull it off, it's, I would say almost like the end of an era of Ohio state, uh, not being able to pull in big names from out of state to play offensive line. Mm -hmm. Um, God, God, you are right. It is that he was the last one. Yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. Well, I mean, Donovan Jackson was high. He was, he was pretty high up. No, in, I said tackle. Okay, tackle. Okay, I said tackle. All right, I missed that part. Yeah, yeah, I said tackle. There, there, there have been some interior guys from out of state. There have been some interior guys from out, from out of state who were uh, good, good pickups. Um, I'm also speaking of the interior uh, and apologies ahead of time for how I'm going to probably mispronounce this name. Henry uh, Fanuku. Fanuku. Fanu I'm going to go Uku. Fanuku. Uh, uh, you know, one day, guys, one day. Uh, uh, interior offensive lineman from the state of Texas. Um a lot of positive buzz for Ohio State there. Um, I do think that this is going to be a smaller offensive line class. And if you want to know why I think this is going to be a smaller offensive line class, be sure to watch the first edition of the 2026 mock, which again will be coming out uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Um, the TLDR, the summary of why is just that I think there's going, I think Ohio State's going to have a massive offensive line class in 2026. Therefore, I think they're going to take a smaller offensive line class in 2025 to balance things out a bit. Um, that being said, we do need to look at who else might be, uh, might be on, might be coming. 
in case they do decide to take a fourth guy or in case Sanders or someone else doesn't work out. Um, or, or Henry. Or Henry, too. Yeah, I... It's it's too early to get the uh, Kyle. It's it's nine points on the it's it's. I know, I know, but still, well, who, who else? Who else? Who else is out there, Jared? Listen, if he goes to Ole Miss, then he'll have an, a a good freshman year there, then transfer here. Because we, if if Ole Miss has a player we want, we take them. It's happened. Ask Iggy. Um, Douglas Utu, um, from, uh, who, uh, who plays football in, uh, for the Gales out Nevada. in Nevada. Um, Andrew Stargle, uh, from Georgia, uh, has gotten some recent buzz. Javian McFadden is a guy we've kept an eye out for a while and I, an eye out on for a while. Uh, Hardy Watts, a new name to this list. Uh, from Massachusetts, Avery Gack, who's probably going to go to Michigan, but maybe keep an eye on in case things go, go bad at Michigan. Some names to keep an eye on at the offensive line position. Now, Kyle, first we're going to take a a commercial break. Uh, Then we're going to talk about the defensive side. Uh, If you want to avoid these commercial breaks, you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com where you can donate money. And as a reward for that donation, you can get ad free uh, versions of the podcast. You can get early access to the podcast and you can get premium access to our discord server. Uh, All of that for three dollars a month, although you can donate more if you please. Uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Here are those commercials now. All right, Kyle, let's talk about the defensive side. Let's get that switched over onto the defensive side. Where do you want to start here? Well, let's let's stick with the slobs up front here. Let's stick with the defensive line here and we'll we'll go into the the uh pass rushers here. So we got we got two already, uh Zaheer Mathis and London Merritt as yep. as the two as the two edge ones here. Uh a lot of buzz, a lot of, a lot of yeah, a lot of buzz about Justin Hill, in-state recruits coming to Ohio State as well. Yeah, I, I think Justin Hill is a matter of time. I, I feel very confident. Um, I, I basically put him and Bo Jackson kind of in the same like. I I just feel like we're just waiting for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, rounding out to, for a fourth defensive end is Marion Dye, uh, who is from the state of Indiana, who, again, is a guy who I've had uh, in the mock for a while now. Um, other names to keep an eye on. Um, sorry, a little lost on my graphic here. Here we are. Um, Javison Hilson. Uh, Hilson is from the state of Florida. Um, JV and Campbell from the state of Kentucky. Um, nope, excuse me. That's, he's a defensive tackle. Uh, Damian Shacklin from Indiana and Zion Grady from the state of Alabama. Um, yeah, I couldn't decide if I wanted to include Zion Grady in, in this list or not. Of the six guys, he's the seventh. I'll I'll say that. Um, But decided to include him. He's on the list. Now, Kyle, if you want to jump to the inside, the interior defensive lineman, we have uh, Brandon Caesar. Uh, Brandon Caesar's guy who I've had in the mock for a while. I will put him right there with with Justin Hill. And and Bo Jackson for guys who I think I think are just, you know, I think we're just waiting. Um, Jarquez Carter, uh, defensive tackle from Florida, some recent buzz on him. Darian Smith is a guy who we've talked about in previous mocks uh, from the state of Maryland. Again, another guy who I feel really, really good about. Um. 
And if we look at our extended list for defensive tackles, uh, Trajan Odom uh, from the state of North Carolina, uh, Cole Breiliner uh, from uh, New Jersey, Javian Campbell, who I mistakenly brought up before uh, from the state of Kentucky and then defensive tackle from the Phil, I think Philadelphia area, Pennsylvania, regardless, Maxwell Roy to, to round out the defensive tackle list. Watch some linebackers. Man, I, I feel like anytime that we're talking about recruiting, Jared, I always talk about like, we talk about the misses and the, lack of elite talent on the offensive line. I feel like you can almost say the same thing with the linebackers. You've brought in some talent in years past, but it seems like a lot of them just don't stick as well as we would like hope to see, like especially when we, we think about the linebackers of like the 2000s when you had Laurinaitis and, and um, Hawk and Schlegel and all of those like big names there. Like, Who's who would be like? When when are we going to see the, like these big big names come to Ohio State here? I, mean, I think you've had it in, in. I think that's I think that's already started. And I think you're going to see uh, vastly. I I don't feel like I feel like if you're asking when is that going to be fixed from a recruiting standpoint, I think it's already been fixed. Um, I think you're going to see those guys on the field a lot this year. Um, uh, th those guys are coming into like their sophomore into their like a uh, second, third years at Ohio state. Um, you're going to don't, don't, don't worry about the linebackers. Don't you worry about the linebackers. They're going to be fine. Um, and also Ohio state's off to a good start recruiting linebackers. Eli Lee and TJ Alford already, uh, in the, in the mock, um, actually I messed this up. I actually replaced Madden Ferriamo. I forgot to update the graphic. Hold please. Hold please. As I just oh, well, give, <laughs> give this well, away. Oh, well, he's doing that real quick here. Yeah. So, uh, Alfred, Alfred from the uh, state of Florida and, Eli Lee in the background in the um, backyard here for Ohio State out in um, Archbishop Hoban out in Akron. Yeah, absolutely. And the third linebacker who I have in the mock will be Nathaniel Uyosa Boat. And uh, once again, I sh am sure. Uh, O W U S U. I'm sure I am once again butchering that, and I apologize. Um, Otang, Otang is the last thing. Do I do I not have? Did all the letters not show up? No, all the letters did not show up. All right, hold on, <laughs> hold on. Fixing it, fixing it. There Everyone, be patient. Everyone, be patient. We're doing it live. Doing it live. Nathaniel Uyosa Botang. Once again, I am sure I am. Uh, messing that up and I apologize. Uh, but I, I have moved him uh, honestly, like straight into the mock. A lot of times I'll have, cause like if you're on our discord server, then, you know, then you already know uh, we, we keep an active like watch list. We, we keep three separate lists for each class. Um, we have a mock and this again is updated constantly in the discord server. We have a mock, we have a short list, and then we have like an extended list, a long list that is just guys to keep an eye on. A lot of times guys will maybe show up in the extended list, move into the short list, and then maybe work their way into the mock. Um, Botang came from uh, like nowhere in the server to straight into the mock. Um, been a lot of heat on him lately. He's from the state of Florida. Um would be it would be a huge pickup for Ohio State, obviously. Uh, still, we we have a, a lot of guys to keep an eye on uh, in on the uh, short list. Which, by the way, that's if you're like 
Oh, there's also a short list. Yeah. The, the short list are the guys who's, these are the other guys to keep an eye on who I've been naming to you. Again, if you're already in the discord server, then you already know how this works. Um, and, um, I, I totally just forgot to update the linebackers is, is what happened here. Um, so awesome for me, but, uh, Matt Inferiamo, uh, Elijah Menendez, Melendez and Riley Pettijohn, uh, is, is who should be on that list. Uh, you can, you know, it's, it's partially right. That's who should be on that list. You can go ahead and ignore the visual on that. Uh, it should be Matt Inferiamo, Elijah Melendez and Riley Pettijohn. I just apparently didn't update the linebacker graphics. That's on me. You want to find out if I, if I updated the cornerback graphics or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out right now. Wow. And I here. did. And I did. Um, yeah. Yeah defensive backs are a little weird um as i alluded to at the beginning of the show and i think we briefly talked about at the end of last episode blake would be uh from the state of virginia did did decommit yes he did i have been in past recruiting episodes i have talked about how you know by the way i had so, yeah, I, I did, but Dorian Brew's red. Dorian Brew should not be red. He should be correct. Uh, white chalk. Um, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, if you're watching this, the, the red are the people who have already committed and the white chalk are the people who uh, have not. Um, point being, um, I have been saying, you know, of... Sanchez offered and would be that we, we weren't going to end with those three guys in the class. As a thing I've been alluding to for a minute. Um, I, I just never felt like they were going to take all three of those guys all the way in. Um, unfortunately I was right. Uh, still have uh, Naeem offered still have Devin Sanchez you know, this is a guy from Alabama and a guy from Texas. So, you know, don't think that just because would be decommitted that that means we're going to automatically be safe with the other two, because I think that would be a faulty assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, I have as a third cornerback in this class, Dorian Brew. Dorian Brew uh, is currently playing football in the state of Texas. Uh, some people consider him a safety, although he has been getting recruited more and more as a corner. So, in fact, I've included him in the mock in previous mocks as a safety. We're slotting him back over to corner. This appears to be where he's being recruited at. So he's a guy who sort of slid back and forth between the two positions a lot. Still, you know, might be considered a, sort of a hybrid. Um, but for right now, we're going to call him a corner. Um and yes, while he's from the state of Texas, he lived um, a lot of his life in the uh, state of Ohio. So. Uh, basically just moved. Uh, basically just moved. So Ohio, Texas, Texas, Ohio, whatever. Uh, some other names to keep an eye on at the cornerback position. I just have Blake Woodby. At this time, I just have Blake Woodby. Um, Ohio State has not seemed too active in going after other cornerbacks this time, which is probably a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, Sanchez and Offord are two of the best in the country. Dorian Brews right behind them. It's going to be difficult to fill in behind those guys. Just it, it's, you know, when you get. If you get two of the top guys in the I want to say they're both, I think, are they one and two, Kyle? Um, Devin Sanchez and Neem Offord, uh, I think they're one and two it might depend upon which service you look at. Uh, and Dorian yeah. Brew is, I think, in the top 10 of any service you look at at corner top five and some, I mm -hmm. think. 
Um, and even though Dorian Brew's not committed yet, a lot of people think it's going to happen. So, like I said, it's just very difficult to bring in a, a fourth guy when your first three are so hyped and so good. Yeah, this week too, Jared. Uh, not sure if you caught this. Something, something to keep an eye out for. Uh, Brandon Finney, uh, cornerback out of uh, Maryland. Here, definitely a name I want to keep out, keep an eye out for as well. How State did make an offer to him this yeah. past week. Here uh, has a lot of trend going to the Nittany Lions right now, but obviously. Honestly, with would be decommitting, I think Ohio State was looking around to see who else might be interested in all that. So another name to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I'm just not ready to go there yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, talk about the safety position. Sean Stewart already in the class. Cody Haddad, kid from Ohio, already in the class. Um. Trey McNutt on an, that, another that, that's 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 just a waiting game I, I think I think that one's almost I think that one could come any time I would and, I would keep an eye on Texas and I would keep an eye on LSU that's all I'm saying I agree with you that it's almost a sure thing but just keep an eye on Trey McNutt just 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 to be sure um but I wouldn't rule out LSU and I wouldn't rule out Texas. I still think Ohio state is very far out in front at first. Very. But just don't rule out LSU or Texas. Okay. Um, also uh, at the safety position. And then I have four safeties, which is kind of why I'm pretty happy keeping corner at three. Um, also. So yeah, four safeties. Um, I have Fahim Delane. Uh, Fahim Delane is from the Maryland area, uh, from the state of Maryland, rather. I'm, I'm you know, seven defensive backs. I, I think maybe don't get. I think it's right, though. Ohio State. Look how many defensive backs Ohio State is slated to lose this year. J just from graduation mm -hmm. mm, yeah it's a fair point and oh they've lost a lot of their underclass two guys transferring out because the seniors stuck around or because there were some really good young guys who jumped the older guys um you know the the yeah it's it's a large defensive back class but they're going to need it they're absolutely going to need it. The Ohio State uh, defensive back room is going to potentially, depending upon who leaves and who doesn't out of the juniors. But the defensive back room could be pretty devastated by the end of this season, just through natural attrition. Uh one addition I have to keep an eye out for at the safety position is Messiah DeLome. Um, absolutely amazing player. I just have him on the outside looking in at this time. It's hard to put a fifth safety into the mock. <laughs> it's very hard to put a fifth safety into the mock. All right, Kyle. That is our latest 2025 mock class. And if you want to, I don't have them on the graphic, but if you want to maybe also keep an eye on kicker, Sean Leonard. That's, you know, just tossing that out there. Um, Kyle, we are going to take another quick ad break. And when we come back, we're going to, make some additional observations about this class. Uh, we're going to see if Kyle disagrees with me anywhere. And I don't know, I'll just talk about the class a bit more. So uh, here's a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Okay, Kyle, we're back. 
Do you see any flaws in my class other than my pronunciations, um, which are notoriously bad? Um, would you make any adjustments to my class anywhere on the offensive or defensive sides? Uh, it's still... It, it's still early. Like, I, I look at the offensive line, and gosh, I, I hope to see that improve. I, like no, I, this is, this is, I'd be so happy with this. I, I don't know. I, I, I would love to see like a fourth. I would love to see like a fourth um, player in here. So I would maybe add in a, add in a fourth into this class here. If I were to add a fourth, do you have, I mean, do you have a strong feeling of who that fourth would be? I, I don't, right. I don't right now. I would I would say it would probably be Stargell from Georgia. I would think would if I were to add a fourth. Um Hardy Watts is another guy who it very well could be. Um Kyle, if you if you want bodies, if you want dudes. Stick, stick around for the next mock class, which again will be airing uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Um, s- s- stick around. Wait, wait till you see the mock class I have for you at 2026. We're, we're going a little light in 2025 to make room for the guys in 2026. Just you wait. Just you wait. What a tease. Uh, I I mean, honestly, like. Oh, just you wait, just you wait, just you wait. Like, again, we're going to do a light class now to keep open a heavy class later. And that's okay, and that's good. And I agree with that strategy for the record. Um. One of the areas I'd say I'm probably least confident right now is in the wide receiver position. As I stated, I currently have Philip Bell and Quincy Porter in there. Um, I don't feel fantastic about. I do think it's going to be a four person wide receiver class. I'm having a really hard time nailing down who exactly I think those four are. Again, Desi Jones, Vernell Brown, I feel good about. Uh, But anytime you see a super long list, like I currently have in the wide receiver position for the short list, when the short list isn't Mm -hmm. very short, you know, I'm sort of struggling to figure out who the next guy, you know, who, you know, who gets those last one or two slots at the wide receiver position. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, whatever position. Um, yeah. Um, any any other thoughts about my class here? No. I I think that was probably probably the biggest one there. A re- l- little bit of everything in in each of these spots here, but yeah, if it if it ended up with, with this class here, very, very solid. Yeah. Um I really wouldn't I mean, current, I'd really I mean, I'd really love to get like Ohio, a good current currently Ohio State is um ranked to number one in the 2025 class with 12 commits right yeah. now. Uh so Absolutely, they can add yeah. in all of those additional ones. Could, could I mean, this be the year that could this be the year that Ohio State actually gets the best recruiting class? It's possible. It's possible. It's amazing with with all with all of the great getting David Sanders Ohio would State. help a ton with that. With all of the great recruits Ohio State has had, and they've have never finished first. And never. I know, I know, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything, but no. if they could steal one of those tight ends back from Miami. Getting Sanders would just be huge and getting to get the number one class. I feel like you have to go get David Sanders. And I don't just mean from a 
statistical standpoint of actually getting, quote, the number one class, end quote. I mean that a lot of Ohio State's very successful recruiting classes, because, you know, as Kyle said, they haven't finished first, but they have finished in the top three or the top five very frequently. Part of the problem, in my opinion, is that that's been so heavily boosted by like the quarterbacks and the wide receivers uh, and it has not necessarily been reflected in the offensive and defensive lines, although they are off to a really good start at both of those positions right now in the 2025 class. Mm -hmm. In order for this class to not just be good on paper, but also to, you know, start to build something of a dynasty. This class needs to complement the last year's class and the year before that's class. And they need to do that by getting offensive linemen, defensive ends and defensive tackles. Yep. Because if even if Ohio State totally flattens out at the wide receiver position recruiting this year, you know what? They'll be fine. Mm -hmm. They got so many amazing wide receivers on the roster right now. And I'm not just talking, you know, young wide receivers on the roster right now. If they totally just flake out here at the wide receiver position, they'll be fine. But they cool. need, but they need some plug and play offensive linemen. They don't need bodies at the Agreed. offensive line. They Agreed. need dudes in the offensive line. So get Carter Lowe, get David Sanders, get a really good interior guy. And that's fine. They don't need bodies. They need they need dudes they on need the dudes. offensive line. Um, and then we'll replenish with bodies in 2026 who are also dudes. But like. Oh, Kyle, Kyle, can we end this episode so I can talk about the 2026 class? Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're going to end this episode. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? About the crew. About the Columbus crew here, they are on a roll. They are on a roll. They've won three straight road games in the MLS, uh, beating out Orlando this last weekend, Chicago the weekend, um, the game before, and then Montreal the week before that. On on a on a monster roll, and and Jared next weekend. Next Saturday, June 1st, it is the CONCACAF Championship Cup. Let's go. Yep. So root, root on for your your Columbus crew this this Saturday. Hey, rooting for the Columbus crew is rooting for America. It is. Yeah. The, the uh, undisputed fact. It it, it, it it literally is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't just pulling that out of nowhere. It literally is. It is it is play be playing in a Stadium um, uh, called uh, Estado Hidalgo, which is north of um, of Mexico City. So, okay, be a very very tough environment for them to play in. But they've they've done it or they've done it already this year. Yes, they have. All right, Kyle. That's the yeah. end of today's show. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a Cleveland band called Signals Midwest. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest.